वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स फॉर टूडेज लेक्चर दैट इज लेक्चर टू ऑन डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ बीम्स ओके विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द मॉडल नंबर टू फॉर अ सब्जेक्ट डिजाइन ऑफ प्रेशर कॉन्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर्स ओके सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी आर डिस्कस अबाउट वॉट इज डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ बीम्स देन वॉट इज शॉर्ट टर्म डिफ्लेक्शन वॉट इज लॉन्ग टर्म डिफ्लेक्शन ओके देन वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द different methods to calculate the deflection of beams okay then next uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss about what are the types of deflections and how to calculate what are the different types of equations to calculate the deflections in pressure coated beams so in deflection of beams it is basically classified it is mainly classified into two classification that is one is short term deflection and long term deflection so i told you what is short term deflection and what is long term deflection so short term deflection is based uh, again it is uh, uh, further classified into due to dead load and lie load okay so the short term deflection is within a short duration of after the application of load so it may be happen due to dead load and lie load and it will be downward deflection and next we have the due to pre stress okay so because of the pre stress we have the deflection in the beams that will be always deflection caused due to pre stress will be always upward deflection in the beam it, the beam will form a camber so which is called as upward deflection it will happen only because of pre stress concrete okay then due to dead load we have the in the dead load we have uh, due to load we have dead load and lie load so in dead load so there are different types of beams loaded with different end conditions okay with uh, different load intensity so we'll discuss one by one so first if we see we have the simply supported beam with udl for a span l okay so if you see uh, the deflection will be always maximum in the mid span so these are the simple beams these are not i am not talking about the pre stress concrete beams i am talking about only simple beams okay so in simple beams suppose the beam is simply supported with udl where will the deflection will be maximum always the deflection will be maximum at mid span so how can you calculate that so you can easily calculate that is by using the maximum deflection delta is equal to 5 wl raised to 4 upon 384 ei next beam we have the beam which is cantilever one end fixed and one end free again loaded with uniformly distributed load so in that case the deflection will be maximum at free end so that we can calculate by equation delta is equal to w l raised to 4 upon ati next one more we have the beam the point load at mid span so again we'll get the maximum deflection at mid span so that's where it is we can easily calculate that is w l cube upon 40 ati these are the deflection calculations or the equations for simple beams these are not for pre stress beams these are only for simple beams subjected to dead load and lie load so then we have again the cantilever beam with Uh, the point load at uh, free end so again we'll get the maximum deflection at free end so that we can calculate easily by w l cube upon 3i so next the one more beam where we don't have the standard equation uh, which is the beam loaded with different uh, point loads the three point loads so suppose if you get such conditions like uh you don't have the standard equation for the calculation of deflection like so on what you get calculated for simply supported with udl cantilever beam with udl so on okay so in that case you can develop the you can uh, develop or you can form a equation for that by using the mohr's theorem so if you see the beam here it is uh, loaded with three point loads so if you see the bendeman diagram it is hmm, uh you can see the bendeman diagram and i have divided into area it is a1 and a2 so by that you can calculate the equations by using moment the mohr theorem so you can calculate by using delta is equal to a x bar upon ei so what is a a is the area of a1 part see please look at here so a1 is what the area of the first part and what is a2 the area of the second part okay so that area you have to calculate so a1 and a2 so what is x bar x bar is the distance from the the centroid of the a1 to the end of the support what is that the centroid of the part or the centroid of the a1 or a2 to the end support so divided by the modulus of modulus of elasticity into moment of inertia so that is by mohr moment area theorem we can estimate deflection of beams very easily even though if you don't have the standard equations okay now we'll next move on to the deflection due to pre stress okay so deflection due to pre stress means what it is 
for pre-stress concrete member. So, how the member behaves because of the pre-stressing cable. So, again it is depend on what the deflection of pre-stress concrete member it is depend on again tendon profile. What type of the profile pre-stressing member carry. So, it is depend upon that. So, we will discuss one by one. So, in that first we have straight tendon. So, if you see the straight tendon with some eccentricity E. So, you can see in the sketch there is a beam loaded with uh, ex, uh, pre stressing force P with some eccentricity. So, in that case what will happen? Note the tendon profile itself represents the shape of the bending moment diagram. So, based on the tendon profile we have learned already in uh, load balancing method also we have discussed what based on load uh, the tendon profile we have to develop the BMD. So, the tendon profile itself gives the bending moment diagram. This part we have already discussed in load balancing method in the previous module. Okay. So, therefore, once if you know the bending moment diagram, we can easily find out the deflection by Mohr's movement area theorem. So, we will discuss for, for straight cable. So, for straight cable, the bending moment is if you see it is a rectangular because it is subjected to only P into E because P is the force which is acting with some eccentricity E about the centroid of this section. So, it will develop a movement that is P into E. So, because of that P into E will form a upward deflection. So, beam will try to bend upward because of P and acting with some eccentricity. So, beam will try to bend upward. So, we can have it is P into E. Okay. So, which will bend upward. So, that is why it is negative sign. Please concentrate here. So, why it is negative is negative sign? Because it is a upward deflection. Because of pre-stressing force, we are going to have upward deflections. Though in pre-stress, when the deflection is upward, we have to take it as a negative. When the deflection is downward, we have to take it as positive. And when the downward deflection, we have to take positive only in case of dead load and light load. Okay. So, by movement, uh, the Mohr's movement area theorem, delta is equal to Ax bar upon Ei. So, A into x bar upon Ei. So, please concentrate here. So, see here. Now, what is A? So, A is the area of the half part of the bending moment diagram. So, what is A? So, the if you see the rectangular uh, bending moment diagram, the size is PE. PE into L by 2. L by 2 is half part of the bending moment diagram. So, PE into L by 2. So, that is area into the centroidal distance. So, centroidal distance for the rectangle it is from the center of the that is half part. So, half divided by 2. So, that is L by 2 divided by 2. So, it is I have shown in the diagram also x bar is from the center of the half part of the bending moment diagram divided by Ei. So, after calculation you will get delta is equal to minus P E L square upon A T I. So, you have to look out here. So, what is area? P E into L by 2. Why it is L by 2? We have to consider only half part of the bending moment diagram where the deflection is maximum. So, that is P E into L by 2 into L by 2 by 2 because it is the half of the half part of the bending moment diagram. So, automatically you will get minus P E L square upon A T I. Why it is minus? Because of upward deflection. Then next we have the parabolic cable. So, again parabolic cable the bending bend will be at again bending moment diagram will be what parabolic. So, it is again minus P E. So, again it is A into X bar upon E I. So, area of the half part of the parabola is what? Two third of P E into L by 2 because it is half of the bending moment diagram. So, that is why it is of two third of P e into L by 2. So, into 5 by 8 of L by 2. So, it is a distance of the centroid of the parabola that is 5 8 of L by 2 divided by E I. So, after solution you will get 5 P E L square upon 48 E I. Okay. So, then we have the sloping tendon. Okay. Sloping tendon. So, that sloping tendon means we will get the bending diagram that is triangular. Okay. So, again we have that uh, A x bar upon E i. So, what is A x bar? So, area is a uh, area of the triangle that is half base into it. Half base is P e. Height is again for half bending moment diagram it is L by 2. Half base into height into 2 third of L by 2 because it is from base. End is a base. So, from base it is the center of the distance is 2 third of L by 2. So, after solution we will get minus P e L square upon 12 E i. So, again I will repeat why it is minus because it is a upward deflection. Okay. Then we will have the trapezoidal. So, again trapezoidal means we will get bending moment as a trapezoidal shape. So, it is again A x bar upon E i. So, again we have to consider we have to divide this into two parts. We have to divide this into two parts. So, that is why it is one part is triangular, one part is 
rectangular so that for you will get 2 a1 and a2 so with respect to that if you calculate a1 x bar plus a2 x bar upon ei so you will get the formula ultimately that is minus p upon 6 ei 2 l1 square plus 6 l1 l2 plus 3 l2 square okay so these are for the different shape of the building uh, shape of the profile then again we have parabolic with eccentricity at support see this is a new top new addition so we'll have the eccentricity at support also the previous whatever you have seen suppose if you see the para parabola here we have the eccentricity at mid span but if you see here this is addition over what it is a what parabola uh, parabolic profile with eccentricity at mid span e1 at support which is e1 and e2 so again you will have the two bedding diagram here that is p into e1 for first eccentricity and p e1 into e2 for second eccentricity so that is for eccentricity at mid span so we'll again we have to divide that is one two bedding diagram we'll get that is for e1 and e1 plus e2 that is plus and minus so e1 for because of e1 you will get downward deflection and e1 plus e2 will get upward deflection so that's why it is minus so here it is written here the resultant deflection please look at here here resultant deflection at the center is obtained as some of the upward deflection due to e1 and e2 and downward deflection due to e2 so we have it will be what summation of upward deflection and downward deflection so ultimately you will get the final equation for that so it is summation of upward and downward so p l square into bracket of e1 minus phi e2 upon 48 ei then next we have sloping cable with again eccentricity at support okay so first it is again a rectangular plus triangular so that is p into e1 that is positive then again minus p into e1 plus e2 that is negative so ultimately after the resultant that is summation of downward plus upward deflection so we will get final equation that is p l square upon 24 ei e1 minus 2 e2 so these are the basic equations required for the calculation of deflection for purely pre-stressing force okay so we have to ultimately how to calculate deflection you have to calculate the deflection based on what the load carried by the section that is dl that is head load and tie load plus the pre-stressing force the ultimate what the summation of the pre uh, the summation of deflection due to the load and due to the pre-stressing whatever the ultimate resultant deflection you get that will be the final answer for the deflection so it's a request you have to go through these equations go through the calculations of the small small calculations if you have any doubts you have to come back okay and uh, you can ready to ask the doubts i am uh, here to clear all the doubts okay but you have to go through that you have to solve okay you have to do the calculations by your own okay then only you can easily understood that and if you get any doubt you are you are free to ask the doubts and you can contact me on my personal whatsapp whatsapp or you can call me okay so before that you have to go through and you have to check all the solutions if there is any mistake or if there any doubt you have to contact me okay so i hope you will go through this and if you get any doubt you will come back to me okay bye bye students